I'm very interested in how to explain change in the world. In my lifetime, I've witnessed a lot of what I would call genuine change. The rise of new issues like human rights, women's rights, environmental uh, justice has led to uh, change. New institutions have been created. Uh, and I felt that the existing theories in political science, international relations, didn't help me explain this change. The existing theories tended to focus on stability. They were very useful in helping explain why states stayed the same, but they weren't helpful in understanding why change occurred. So when I looked at explaining why changes occurred, I felt that we needed to pay attention to bottom-up actors, actors that I would later call transnational advocacy networks. So we wrote a book called Activists Beyond Borders that um, had the subtitle Transnational Advocacy Networks in Inter International Politics. And we invented that term, transnational advocacy networks. We invented the term because it described a reality we saw when we went out and interviewed people about human rights or the environment or women's rights, they described themselves as being part of networks. So we coined this term, transnational advocacy networks, because these networks were engaged in advocacy. They were, they were arguing in favor of particular positions. They were pressuring and lobbying to get their ideas in politics. And they were transnational because they crossed borders. They weren't limited to a single country. Um, we felt that transnational advocacy networks were an important part of the explanation for why these exciting changes were happening in politics. The first thing I should say is explain what we mean by transnational advocacy networks. Political scientists have, and sociologists have used the notion of a network for a while. And by network, they mean um, something that's voluntary, reciprocal, and horizontal. So what does that mean? It, it, it's not like a bureaucracy. A bureaucracy or it's not like an organization. In a bureaucracy an organization, you, have, you can do a, a chart of the way power flows in the organization. And if you have a boss, your boss tells you what to do and your boss can fire you. In a network, it's voluntary because people choose to enter the network and they can choose to leave the network. It's formally horizontal because there's no organizational chart where you have a boss and your boss can't fire you. No one in the network can fire you from the network. Um, and it's reciprocal because people join networks because they, they, they want to get something out of the network. And it, one reason they stay in networks is because they do get something out of it. People do mutual uh, favors for one another, but also they help one another out. So that's the basic notion of a network. But a network uh, can be in a town, in a city, or in a country. Uh, to be a transnational advocacy network, first you have to work across borders. And so to be transnational in our field, usually we think it has to work in at least three countries. Um, to be an advocacy network, it needs to be advocating for particular positions or particular ideas. Um, and so we thought that a transnational advocacy network was thought that group of relevant actors who are working together, who share uh, a common uh, discourse, a common set of ideas, and they engage in dense exchanges of information and services. So what does that mean? Okay, the, in the human rights movement that I study, it means groups like Amnesty International, that's an organization, gets into a network that might include uh, uh, individuals like the Madres de la Plaza de Mayo, which means the Mothers of the Plaza de Mayo in Argentina, one of the major human rights organizations in Argentina that worked to um, protest the, the disappearance and killing of their children. It means having people in the network like the Ford Foundation that may be providing money to Amnesty International and to the Mothers of the Plaza de Mayo to help them carry out their work. It means linking sometimes to people in the media or people in academia or people in international organizations or even parts of governments. So a network is not, it doesn't mean just civil society organizations or non-governmental organizations, what we call NGOs. 
NGOs and civil society organizations are always an important part of networks, but networks are much more than just civil society groups. Networks can be simultaneously agents or actors in world politics, and they are also structures. Um, Margaret Keck and I, when we wrote the book Activists Beyond Borders, we argue in that book that networks can be either agents or structures. We preferred to focus on the actor side, the agent side of networks. We wanted to do that because we were interested in explaining change. To explain change, we thought we needed actors, we need real agents, real people who uh, struggle to bring about change. And so most of my research has focused on the emergence of new norms and new ideas. And there I've needed and used uh, this understanding of, of advocacy networks as agents. Other scholars are more interested in networks as structures. Uh, and by that they mean that networks have these uh, in, uh, enduring qualities that affect the uh, outcomes that happen by virtue of their um, by virtue of their structure. So, for example, um, networks. So I said that networks are formally horizontal, but informally we know that even networks have hierarchies within them. In the Human Rights Network, there's some organizations like Amnesty International or like Human Rights Watch that are powerful, more powerful than other organizations in the network. So those organizations uh, may create a certain structure of the network. Maybe they're at the center of it. They're like a hub and wheel uh, network, which is one uh, description we use of one possible network structure. Um, in those types of networks, those organizations can be what we call gatekeepers. So Charlie Carpenter has written that the powerful organizations within networks can be gatekeepers and decide which issues get adopted and which issues are not accepted. Get more from The Open University. Check out the links on screen now.